Hey everybody, it's Mr. MathBlog. This is the second part of Rational and Irrational Numbers. I don't know why they did uh, these two parts in one lesson right here, because it's a huge lesson, I think, anyway. So here's our, our question right here. We did this in the last lesson right here. How can we rewrite rational and irrational numbers, or rational numbers as decimals and fractions right here? This lesson, we're going to take square roots and cube roots, and then at the very end, we're going to approximate irrational numbers okay so it's going to seem kind of vague like this first sentence right here is kind of goofy so the square root of a positive number p is x if x squared equals p okay there are two square roots for every positive number okay so for example you guys if we had uh, the square root of 36 if we had x squared equals uh, 36 okay so right here if we had this right here x squared equals 36, then x could be 6 or negative 6, because if I squared 6, 6 squared right here, 6 squared would equal 36, and negative 6 squared, a negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 6 squared equals 36 also. So if we have x squared equals a number, always think there's always going to be a positive and negative solution on that, okay? All right, so if we had x squared equals 1 25th, then x could be 1 5th or negative 1 5th because uh, we can rewrite square roots of um, uh, 1 25th as uh, uh, 1 5th squared is 1 25th and, and um, negative 1 5th also, if we squared that, would also be 1 25th, okay? So if we have x squared equals a number, then we're always going to have a plus or a minus feature as our, as our answer. You'll, we'll get more of that in just a minute. Okay, so the square root symbol looks like that. You guys have probably seen that before on your calculators, okay? Okay, the square roots and we're going to try and stay away from calculators today and uh, if you're in my integrated math one class we don't let you use calculators for almost the whole school year because you guys um, you turn those calculators on and you turn your brains off so we just want you to be uh, uh, don't don't lose uh, hope on your math skills you guys um, it just helps you much later uh, for the rest of your math life and you guys got a lot of left to your eighth grade right now so Anyway, sorry. So um, uh, this is called the square root feature, and your book says the principal square root. Okay, so whatever. So and it's always a positive number. We can't square root a negative number. We'll talk more about that in just a second. So a number that is a perfect square has square roots that are integers. So like 81, the square root of 81. If we had x squared equals 81, then its uh, its square roots would be uh, 9 and negative 9, or plus or minus 9, okay? So cube roots, you guys, cube roots don't have the plus or minus feature. There is only one cube root for every positive number. There's one cube root for every negative number. Your book didn't say that, but I'm sharing that with you. So for example, the cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 cubed is 8, okay? So cube roots means what number times itself three times would equal that number. So 2 to the third equals 8, so the cube root of 8 would equal 2, okay? The cube root of negative 8 is equal to negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, a negative times a negative is a positive, but times one more negative is a negative. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2. The cube root of 1 27th is 1 third, okay? Because um, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So 1 third, equals, 1 third cubed equals 1 27th. So if I did a cube root of 1 27th, that would be 1 third. Now cube root features looks just like square root features, except there's a little 3 right here. Okay, uh, square roots means... Um, there's an imaginary 2 right here, and we'll talk more about that later. But cube roots, anything else, we got. if it's understood, if there's nothing there, it's understood to be a square root. But if there's a number there, then here it's a 3, so it's a cube root. Later on, we'll do fourth roots and fifth roots and all that stuff. Aren't you excited? So a number that is a perfect cube has a cube root that is an integer, okay? So for example, the number 125 is a perfect cube because its cube root is 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So the cube root of 125 is 5. All right, isn't that exciting? Okay, I know you're excited. Okay, so here we have x squared equals 121, x squared equals 16 over 169. Okay, let's remind ourselves what squares are, okay? There's the first 10. Let me get a little pen here. All right, because you guys can't see my cursor. I don't know why. 
uh, with my new computer you just don't see it so so here we go so we have here's a uh, zero squared is zero one squared is one one times one here's two times two three times three four squared five squared most of you guys know these if you don't you should know these okay if you don't know those I'm telling you you're gonna make your math life a whole lot easier to know these in fact all the way up through let's keep going okay so here's 11 squared 11 times 11 12 times 12 okay probably I remember when I was in uh, grade school I had to memorize those so and that was a long time ago 13 square I'm in my 50s you guys I'm almost 60 13 squared is 169 14 squared 15 squared 16 squared 17 squared just keep going to 20 okay 17 squared so um, I, I would recommend knowing as many of these as you can you gotta know these guys and at least these guys right about there okay 15 squared is a good one to know 16 squared I, I remember that one. I remember that one. 18 squared is 324. I remember that one. 19 squared is the one I always forget, but it's 361. 20 squared is a slam dunk. 2 squared is 4, so 20 squared is 4 with two zeros, 400. All right, so let's go back to those problems right here. So x squared is uh, plus or minus. Remember, uh, because um, a number squared, you can hear me, I'm sitting, actually, I'm sitting in my trailer. We're at my in-law's house. And um, uh, and we take our trailer because we have our four dogs and and so I'm sitting in my trailer and you hear traffic going by because so we don't want to take the dogs in the house so they're out here sitting with me in the trailer being nice dogs it's uh it's August uh, August like fourth I think so it's before right before school starting so we're just doing our last minute traveling before school starts anyways okay so x squared is plus or minus the square root of 121 square root of 121 is 11 so it's plus or minus 11 okay so okay over here this one's going to be x squared is plus or minus the square root of 16 over 169 when you square root fractions square root the top and square root the bottom square root of 16 is 4 square root of 169 is 13 so don't forget the plus or minus okay so plus or minus four thirteenths okay all right okay so cube root oops i'm sorry so can we square root and can we square an integer and get a negative number no we can't okay i'll show you why so what does this indicate about whether uh negatives have a square root okay so uh, the square of any integer is never um, negative it's non-negative okay so for example um, 4 squared is 16 positive 16 negative 4 squared is also positive 16 0 squared is 0 that's the only one that's neither positive or negative 0 that's why we say non-negative otherwise we'd say it's always positive okay so so when we square a number it's got to be some positive number or it could be 0 so we can just say non-negative okay so a negative number can never have a real square root now when you get into im3 integrated math 3 we have these things called imaginary numbers so but that's later so so if we square root of the negative number your calculators usually say error i tried that on this calculator here this calculator doesn't say error it just doesn't square root okay so here here's the square root of 16 you guys know that it's four Okay, but if I hit the square root of negative 16, I've got to hit this little plus minus button right here. There's the square root, and it, it just won't do it. It just it doesn't can't square root that. I'm hitting square root, square root, won't do it. So because it's it's not real. Okay, and not and then we get into IM3, we have imaginary numbers, and that's where that comes in. But that's not for a couple of years away. All right, so. Uh, solve each equation. So these are cube roots. Let's remind ourselves about cube roots. Okay, zero cubed, zero times zero times zero. One cubed is one times one times one, which is one. Two times two times two is eight. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is twenty-seven. So there's three cubed. There's four cubed. Four times four times four. Five times five is twenty-five. What's um, what do you have when you have five quarters? That's a hundred dollar twenty-five. So five cubed is hundred twenty-five. 6 cubed is 216. Okay, uh, I gotta admit, some of these I kind of forget and I gotta go back and remind myself. So, like for 7 cubed, I'd hit four, I'd do 49 times 7 on a piece of paper and that'd give me 7 cubed. 8 cubed would be 64 times 8 because uh, 8 times 8 is 64. It's 512. 9 cubed is 81 times 9. 10 cubed will stop there, you guys. Okay, alright, so let's go back and um, uh, we have. 
Okay, I'll come back to that. So we have, um, uh, we I'm seeing numbers of 729. I think that was 9. Okay, that's 2 and that's 5. Okay, so cube roots only have uh, one answer, you guys. So this is just a cube root of 729, which is 9. Square roots, we'd write plus or minus, but cube roots, it's always just uh, one answer. Okay, okay, here. If we had uh, the cube root of negative 729, then x would equal um, um, uh, the cube root of that is negative 9, okay? Because negative 9 cubed, negative 9 times negative 9 is 81. 81 times negative 9 is negative 729. So we can cube root negatives, we just can't square root negatives. Sorry, you can't see that right there. It's going right through. I'll fix that. Uh, okay, so okay, so we just can't uh, um, we can't if we had the square root if that three wasn't there and it was the square root of that we'd say no solution okay no real solution actually there's an imaginary solution later okay anyways okay so over here so x cubed is uh, the cube root of x equals the cube root of this fraction 820 over 125 which is the cube root of 8 over the cube root of 125 cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 125 is 5, so we get x equals 2 fifths, okay? All right, let's cover, do a couple more. Okay, here's our square roots, okay? So I'm seeing I'm seeing these numbers, 196 and 9 and 256. Okay, here's all our, our squared answers right now, right there, okay? So um, uh, that's all our squared uh, uh, numbers right there. So the square root of 196, okay, the square root of 196, okay, is going to be 14. Okay, and then um, uh, let's see, and then we have uh, the 256 one. So 256 was 16. Okay, so here we go. Um, uh, so remember, x squared equals a number. We always have to have plus or minuses right there. Okay, now what I would do, you guys, is write those down and help yourself memorize those. Okay, just it, I bet it'd take you five minutes if you just to spend time to memorize those. And you're just building your math career, you guys, and you want to do good later on in math. I want you to come into my class and just be strong uh, with numbers like these, square numbers, okay? Okay, so uh, this is plus or minus 14, okay, over here. And then uh, over here, we're going to get the square root of 9 over the square root of 256, plus or minus, don't forget, so 3 sixteenths. Okay, cube roots, cube roots, um, so here we're gonna, x is going to be the cube root of this x is going to be the cube root of this fraction, okay? So let's go remind ourselves what cube roots are, okay? So there's cube roots, okay? I saw 512 right there. What else did we see? We saw we saw 343 and 64, okay? The cube root of 64 I know is 4, and the cube root of 343 is 7, okay? Cube roots only have one answer, okay? So the cube root of 512 is 8. Cube root of the fraction, 64 over 343, is the cube root of the top over the cube root of the bottom, so we get 4 sevenths. All right, let's talk about irrational numbers, okay? Irrational numbers are numbers that are not rational, well, duh. So in other words, they can't be written in the form of A over B, where A and B are integers. That's what a rational number is. And B can never be 0, because we can never divide by 0. Also, if they give you a decimal, Irrational numbers are non-repeating and non-terminating decimals. They go on forever and they don't repeat. Can you think of a number that goes on forever and it never repeats itself? Okay, and put, uh, there's infinitely many. Okay, but the, probably the most common one that you're aware of is the number pi. Okay, 3.14159 to something, something, something. It goes on forever and ever and ever. I used to have a student. His name was Trenton. Uh, and he was, let's see, he Trenton is my son's age, so he's almost 30. Uh, or Yeah, he's, he's 29 at least. So anyways, but Trenton knew uh, pi out to 100 decimal places, and, uh, and he would proudly say him to you. Anyways, I only know about four or five decimals, but it goes on forever and ever and ever. Okay, square roots of perfect squares are rational numbers, like the square root of 25 is a perfect square, so the square root of 25 is 5 and 5 is a rational number. Square roots of numbers that are not perfect squares, like the square root of 2, is an irrational number. So if we had x squared equals 2, then x would be plus or minus the square root of 2. And since 2 is not a perfect square, then the square root of 2 is an irrational number. All right, so we're going to estimate the square root of 2, okay? We'll do a couple of estimating of irrational numbers. Remember, the square root of numbers that are not perfect squares are irrational, which means if you, if you put that in the calculator, it would go on forever and ever and ever, 
as far as your calculator would let you, and it wouldn't repeat itself. Okay, so let's estimate the square root of 2. Okay, so what we got to do is find two consecutive perfect squares that 2, not square root of 2, but 2 lies in between. Okay, so think of perfect squares. 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. So the numbers like 0, 1, 4, 9, 25... I'm sorry, yeah, uh, 16, 25. I'm squaring all these numbers. So which one does 2 lie between? It lies between 1 and 4. Okay, 1's a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square. All right, so now let's take the square roots of all of those numbers, the 1, the 2, and the 4. Okay, we don't know what the square root of 2 is, but we do know that the square root of 1 is 1. Okay, and the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 2 must lie somewhere between whatever the square root of 1 is and whatever the square root of 4 is. Okay, so since uh, 2 is closer to 1 than it is to 4, okay, then the square root of 2 is going to be closer to the square root of 1 over the square root of 4. Okay, how much closer? Well, it's only one digit away to 1, and it's only what, uh, 2, 3, 4, 2 digits away to uh, 4, so it's going to be closer to 1 than 2, so it's going to be 1 point something, okay? 1.3 maybe-ish, 1.4, I don't know, but we do know that the square root of 2 lies between 1 and 2, because it lies between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4, which is 1 and 2. Okay, so, so uh, since 2 is a little bit closer to 1 uh, than it is to 4, then, whoops, I forgot my square root symbol. Let's put that in there real quick. Sorry. Then the square root of, of 4 it takes me a while to build these symbols. All these symbols I build just like this. Okay, so the square root of 4, I'm sorry, the square root of 2 is going to be a little closer to uh, 1 than it is to 2. Okay, so now that's not going to carry with me in the next lesson or the next slide. So um, if I had time, I'd just copy and paste all those, but I don't. Anyways, this symbol won't just pretend like this symbol carries in the next slide right there. Anyway, so the square root of 2 is going to be a little closer to the square root of 1 than it is to 4. Square root of 4, okay? So it's going to be closer to 1 than it is to 2. I hope I'm making sense, okay? That's what that says right there. So 1 point something like 1 1.3, 1 1.4. I'm going to say 1.4. Let's see what it actually is, okay? If we picked up the calculator and... Um, hit the square root of 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So 2 square root, 1.414. Okay, if you said 1 1.3 or even 1 1.2, I'd, I'd be okay with that. Now your book goes into a little bit more depth on this, on how to get even more accurate. I don't think that's necessary later on, so you got, I just I skipped that part. Because it, uh, it would take another 5-10 minutes to explain that part, and I don't think it's necessary. All right, how about the square root of 8, okay? The square root of 8 uh, lies somewhere between the square root of uh, 4 and the square root of 9, okay? So square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is uh, 3, so square root of 8 is somewhere closer to between 2 and 3, okay? Is it closer to 2 or is it closer to 3? Well, 8 is much closer to 9 than it is to 4, so the square root of 8 is going to be closer to the square root of 9, well, then it is the square root of 2. Okay, it's going to be 2 point something because it's going to be less than the square root of 3. So 2 point something, since it's closer to that, I don't know, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, I don't know. If you got any one of those, I would totally take that. Just recognize it's closer to uh, square root of 3, or square root of 9, which is 3, than it is to the square root of uh, 4, which is 2. Let's try it. 8 square root. 2.8284727. Okay. Anyways, uh, that's the lesson on that part right there. I hope that makes sense. And take care.